Hello, my name is Karen and today this will be my fourth video and we're going to paint this cat. I'm going to show you a picture of the reference photo which is right here. So this is what we're going to be painting today and I am using 300 pound hot press arches. I'm using hot press because it's a little bit softer today. It, it has a, um, it's not like the cold press, it's, it's smooth. And I want this kitty to have some real soft areas around her fur. And so, as you saw from the video, she's lying on this bed. We're gonna change colors a little bit here. But I want to get going on this and so the first thing we're going to do before we even do the background is do the eyes. To me, when we get the eyes, everything else falls into place. So we're going to do the eyes first. So this kitty has some kind of yellow, gold, green eyes. So we're going to start with some raw sienna in the eyes and just so you know, I have marked off a little bit of um, masking here with this high precision, here we go, masking fluid marker, drying gum. So I just did a little around the ears, a couple little places here, a highlight for the eyes, and just some whiskers. So that's what I use to get started. And so we're gonna start with some raw sienna. I see that my, my big problem is with brushes. I don't clean them very good. Clearly, I start the video, should have nice clean brushes, but that's the color we want. So I am going to, right away, just get a little bit more and a little cleaner. That feels better. Okay, right there. So I'm going to cover this eye with this raw sienna. Right there, this raw sienna I'm using is made by Windsor Newton. I'm not covering up the pupils yet. So just the raw sienna. I want a little bit more in this eye here. There we go. So right now they're very gold. Now this kitty has some green in it as well. So I'm going to go to my sap green and mix up just a little bit, fairly thin, a little extra water there to get us a little green and we're gonna drop some of this in right here. So drop in just a little bit here, maybe just a little bit up here, close to this eye. I wanna leave a little of that gold at the bottom. Some of it might creep in a little bit, but that's what I wanna do. Now we have to wait for that to dry before we can go back into the pupil, otherwise it'll spread out in a way we don't want to. But that's our first step on the eyes. Now I want to do the background. So on the background, again, I want it to stay really wet. And I want it to be wet right up against all of this fur here. So we're going to come really, really close to this fur. And I'll show you how we're going to keep this soft. Now some of this I have a little masking on the ears but mostly we're just gonna come close even when there's no masking and get this all nice and wet all around here. There's a lot of fur going on here, so we'll wanna get that. So if you have not seen my other videos, we have three other videos to watch. And the first one is a barnyard chicken, a white chicken, but it isn't white. It is white, it'll appear white, but it's got a lot of pretty colors in it. And the next one is hummingbirds, a hummingbird, sorry. And um, a hummingbird and let's see, what all do I have in there? And some spring blossoms. And the third one is a cow. So if you haven't had a chance to look at them, I hope I invite you to look on YouTube and see these. And please subscribe if you can, because then you'll get notification of when these come out. I'm trying to do them about once a week. Um, sometimes it's two weeks, kind of depends on how the week goes, but that's what my goal is to try to get it to be 
like once a week. So don't know what my next one is. I've gotten a couple suggestions of a deer and, um, and I may do that in the future, but for right now, um, sometimes I'll just take a picture and something's like, Ooh, that's what I want to paint. So I kind of use how I'm feeling. Now, the reason for this cat, I went out with my sister a couple of weeks ago and we, we isolated, we were in separate cars. However, we got a chance to go to this farm and this little kitty was in the window and it was just so cute. I'm looking out and I see this kitty watching us sitting on his pillow like a big queen um, watching us and um, it was just so cute. I couldn't help but take pictures. I also got some pictures of horses and there is one horse I don't know if any of you like horses, but I kind of want to paint a horse. And um, so that might be coming up as a paint horse. It's really, really pretty. All right, I want to just clean this palette really quick before I put my colors in the background. And I'm going to start with the very same color I started with the eyes, which is my raw sienna. And I'm purposely putting some kind of gold around this just because I want to keep these areas really soft. Now I'm going to add some darker colors and, um, but right in here, just want a little bit. I don't know if you can hear, I have my window open. The birds are singing out so pretty. Can you hear that? I don't know, there's also cars in the background too, so you may not be able to, but something about the birds just make me feel so happy. So you know I have this very, very wet, so this will enable me to add some more colors later. So that's what I'm going to do later, like in a few minutes. But anyway, this was fun to do this, take these pictures of this kitty and take the pictures of the cow. And then this lady had rhubarb for sale and she has five acres where, and this is way out in the country, where she's going to have like a very, very big garden to sell produce. And I'm thinking, oh, once everything lifts, I'm talking about the coronavirus, um, we're already in the lifting stage, but once it lifts, how fun would that be to go out there and just get some fresh garden produce. We have a little garden this year too, but it's little and I don't know how much produce we're gonna get, but right now it's kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going around here. I'm leaving this little patch here because that's part of her bed, her kitty bed. I wanna get kind of close here in the paws. All right, so there's my raw sienna. Now in the background, I want it to be darker. So I'm going to actually use what's called brown matter it's this really pretty kind of reddy brown color and over the raw sienna, I think it'll be really pretty. So we'll try that. I know I'll have to mix up a bunch of this, but let's get started on this and see what we can get. Yeah, I think this is gonna be pretty and it'll blend a nice color with our kitty. Now I did not put any masking here, so I want that to kind of come just softly down there and we'll put a little bit here and want that to be kind of soft as well around this little kitty ear. Isn't that a pretty color? And what I might do, there's another color called Rose Matter. Um, these are by Holbein, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but I think they're Holbein. So Rose Matter, I think is right in here, which is just a little, oh yeah, isn't that pretty? So we're just gonna make that background just, we'll kind of mix some of it in here. And where this kitty fur goes out, we're gonna to wanna to just let some of that come out like this, keeping it soft. Ooh, I love that color. That is so pretty. So I, I used a little bit of masking right in here, but not a lot. So I wanna keep some of this yellow away for, for now, just to kind of to get some colors here. So I'm going to go back to the brown, back, back to the brown matter, and then I'm going to add some more rose. We're going to keep this white because this is where the kitty bed is. But I notice she has a little bit of 
um, whiskers coming out there. So I'm going to make that kind of light right there. So we're going to come right into here, round her little paws. So you see how very wet this is. I mean, this is like super wet, wetter than it probably needs to be. But it does allow me to work with it for quite some time before it dries. And so I, I, I don't have to be in a super hurry here. Now, I guarantee you I didn't um, mask here. So I want that to be super soft right here. Here's part of the white of the bed. So we're going to we're gonna use that. That's the kitty part. Okay, now I want to go back to that really pretty rose matter. I just think it adds a nice little touch. Look at that. Ooh, it's so pretty. Okay, so a little of this right up by her paws. I'm gonna call this a girl cat. She kind of looks more like a girl cat to me. Could be a boy cat. I didn't ask the lady what her, um, what if it was a boy or a girl kitty. So I have no idea, but I sure think it's, it's a beautiful cat. I know that. All right, got a little bit of color here. So I'll just lift it out. It's not a, not a big deal, but as long as we're here, I'm gonna mix a little of this together all right, so we are almost done, and then I'm going to need, as you know, to blow dry. So that's what I'm going to be doing next, and so we'll we'll delete a lot of that part out. So real quick, as in my other videos, I've just let you know that here we want to get as much of that water up as possible. So we'll just go around here, get all of this up. Whoa. That will slide back into there, so don't worry if you actually got a little bit extra. There's a lot of water puddled right here. So I'm going to go into it just a little bit, and I'm going to... No, I'm just going to leave it. Just going to leave it. Okay, so we're going to blow dry, and then as soon as we're done, we'll start going back to those eyes. Okay, we are done blow drying, and you can see where I left... This is so wet that my tape is lifting up a little bit. And this is where sometimes push pens might be a better plan. Although, as I said in my previous video, the problem with push pens for me is they always come out. And unfortunately, I step on them on the floor and they go right through. Ooh, they hurt so bad. But nobody else has that problem. That's just my problem. Okay. So look how pretty that background is. I really, really like it. So we're gonna go back to the eyes and what I wanna use is a little bit of Quinn Burnt Orange. This is by Daniel Smith, just a little bit. And I'm also gonna get a little bit of Verdita Blue right here. And that's gonna go right in the shadow of those eyes. So first we're gonna use the Quinn Burnt Orange, and we want to drop just a little bit here because usually kitties just have a teeny bit of gold um, in that, and that just makes it really pretty. I want to keep that lighter here because, especially where this little kitty's looking out the window, he's going to have a little bit lighter on the bottom of his eyes. So I'm going to drop just a teeny bit more in there. A little bit more in there and then I want to have I've softened that out a little bit then I want to have a little um, of this Verdita blue right where the shadow comes and we might have to gray that down a little bit more but for right now underneath their lid they're always going to have a little more shadow so we're just going to go right over the pupil because we will be covering that to black or really dark color, but we gotta let that dry just a little bit. I like that. Okay, so that as that's drying, we'll come back in a little bit and do that pupil. So in the meantime, as you see, we've got a little bit of hardness here where we want lines, but we'll address that. Well, maybe we'll just address it right now. So I'm going to take a brush my, no, I'm going to go to an eight. This is Jack Richardson eight. I want to soften this out just a little bit at the top of his head where that line got kind of hard. 
because I want that to be very, very, very soft where the top of that little kitty's head is. Just go right in here. So I'm just kind of jiggling it back and forth just to get a little softness back there. Um, sometimes it works out just perfectly to put the water here and other times it just, just needs a little tickle here and there. So at the top of the ear, I wanna get a little bit of that softness there too. All right, that should do it for now. You can see that I got a little bit of our color in here. That will come out very easily just by jiggling it around a little bit. And if not, I'll take a, a little bit firmer of a brush later and get that out. But for now, I think we're good to go. Okay, so let's go to his e her ear. And I wanna do that Quinn Burnt Orange here again on the ear. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of this. And we're gonna start doing some extra colors on. So I want this to come in first. It's gonna drift a little bit because I just got through using my brush up here, but that's okay. I, I want it to be nice and soft. So right in here, and then at the top, I'm going to go to what is called yellow ochre, which is a little bit more opaque, but I wanna drop some yellow ochre into that area right there. Now where I soften that, that's a good place just to kind of tickle a little bit of that in there. So we know that ear is a little bit darker. And what I might do is also put just a little bit of burnt umber right in my reference photo that shows me it even goes a little darker right there. We'll just let that come up. Now, I want this to be really soft, so I'm just gonna take my brush and tickle this down a little bit. And I want this to remain soft. So I'm gonna lift a little of that out with my brush. It's only drifting in there because I have it damp, but that should be okay. As long as that's wanting to drift anyway, this is a good time to put a little bit of quinacridone rose, just a little. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of quinacridone coral with that because I want a really light, soft pink in that ear, in that ear, just a little bit. Just tickle it down here. And as long as we got that mixed up, let's just go right in here and get a little bit of that here. Yeah, little kitties have a little bit of pink in their ear if you'll look at them. All right. Right now he looks like he's mean, but he's not. He's a really soft, sweet kitty. Kind of want to, don't like the way that hard line just went. So we'll just tickle that on top of that as well. Okay, we'll come back to that a little bit later. So inside this ear, I see a little bit of this blue as well. It's kind of more of a shadow, but let's just drop a little bit of blue here. I do have some masking in this area. So this will eventually be kind of a white, but for right now, I wanna drop just a little bit of this blue. And then I'm gonna take my Quinn Burnt Orange and drop this on top and let it just float in here and put a little bit right in here. And most of that is gonna stay really soft. I'm just softening that at the bottom. And it feels like we're gonna need a little blue here as well on top of our pink, which pink and blue makes a little bit of a purple, but it just needs to be a little touch darker is all. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Okay, so right behind his ear, her ear, there's definitely a darker area here. So I wanna capture that. So we're gonna put, I think I'm going to put uh, a little verdita blue and then I'm gonna put a little purple in there too. So first I'm going to add this where it goes darker, just a little bit. And right in here on this side, cause the same thing goes a little darker. And maybe, Drop a little of 
this cobalt violet, which will give us just a really pretty darker color. And we can always come back later and drop a little bit of quinburnt orange on top of that. So it'll just tickle that down, give that a little special color there. Now, right behind there, I'm gonna pick up that yellow ochre again and carry some of that through just a little bit. And I feel like on top of that, I wanna drop some of that quinburnt orange. So I just want you to know the colors that I'm picking up now, I'm just kind of randomly picking these up. Ultimately, what we want is our little kitty to look like a kitty, but have some fun colors. Now, you may not want to work with this uh, the smooth, look at that, that's coming up. You may not want to work with this hot press. It's actually easier, I feel, when you're doing an animal to use the cold press. But I happen to have this hot press on hand, and like I told you before, I think it gives a little bit of a softer uh, feel to it. So for me, that's why I chose the soft press, the, the hot press. But I do want to tell you that the hot press is a little different to work and it feels a little slicker. So it can be really frustrating if somebody isn't used to using that. It really can be. I've gotten to where I'm used to it and I actually like the feel of it. It feels good to me. Now as I Look back in this ear here. This definitely still has a little bit of darker, so I want to drop a little of that in there. And at the top of this ear, I still want it to have a little bit more. There we go. That feels good. When I leave an area like this and it has a hard line, I just like to tickle that out just a little bit so it doesn't dry hard like that. This one, we can just soften that out a little bit too. Okay, those eyes should be dry enough to where we should be able to go in and put us a pupil in here. So I'm going to mix some sepia and some, um, let's see, I gotta think what the name of it is. It is gray matter. Um, nope, I don't think that's it. Gray matter, is it by HW, Paints Gray, sorry. Okay, so a little of this and a little of Paints Gray. Both of these are by HWC or Holbein. So it just makes a really nice, rich black. You probably wonder, well, why don't you just use black if you're going to be having that in? And the reason I don't use just black, I've just found that I get a richer color when I mix some colors together. I like what they do. They're just, they're good. Now I'm going to go to a smaller brush and while I have that black mixed up, I want to put kind of a dark line on top of his eye where I see it to be dark. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of that paints gray, a little bit more of that sepia. A little smaller brush, I'm using um, Cosmo Top, a Da Vinci Cosmo Top Spin number six. So right in here, it definitely has a little bit of darker here. Okay, and right in the corner, it definitely has some darker. So we're gonna put a little of this here. Soften that out just a touch. And this comes down with this darker color right down here. It comes here on the outside of his eye goes right in there. Now what I like to do is really soften this out here. So this is dark, but it kind of has a soft look. And on this inside, I'm going to tip my picture upside down here and get from this upside down and soften this out just a little bit right here. So it's not quite so harsh. I may put that in darker on the other side, but that looks better. Now I picked up a little bit where I put my color here. I'm gonna soften that little area out right there. But I do have a highlight, remember, so that's gonna take care of some of that. All right, we're gonna go to the next eye. Make sure that's nice and steady. 
and same thing he's got this real dark area right here I call him as a he I have to get all my my uh, I guess kitty sexes out like is this a he or is this a she we'll figure it out I or maybe we won't because we really don't know if it's a he or a she Okay, but this one wants to go a little bit darker than what we have it, so we'll do that. And then I want to go underneath this eye where it's definitely darker. Okay. Soften this out below. There we go. And I think we're going to I need to kind of touch that one up just a little bit there. This eye on the top, put it just a little bit more dark here. Okay, that looks good for now. We'll always come back to it because eventually we're gonna to wanna to take out that um, highlight. But before this dries, I want this pupil, I'm gonna soften it around just a little bit because pupils, are never perfectly hard. They go a little soft around the edges. If you ever wanna look at the mirror at your own pupil, you will see that it is kind of feathered out just a little bit. It isn't, it's dark, but it has a softness to it too. So that's what we're gonna do there. Just let that kind of soften. I think that's looking pretty good. Now underneath this little kitty's I purposely left this because this stays a little bit white. So because of that, I wanna pick up this Quinburnt Orange a little bit darker here, right underneath his eye. It comes down like this, goes right into there. And then underneath this, it gets darker. So we wanna make just kind of a soft little edge. Now if we just left it like that, it wouldn't look very good. So we're just gonna soften that out a little bit. And then we're gonna need to soften this on the inside because this little kitty doesn't, it has a square kind of look, but it doesn't go hard like this. So just like this. I have found myself over the years painting a lot of kitties. And I think the reason I have, I do like kitties a lot, but we can't have one because my husband's allergic to most cats. So it kind of satisfies that little kitty urge just by painting one and getting to see how cute they are. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So part of his eye, her eye, comes down here just a little bit, just like that. And comes down a little bit by the ear and goes a little bit into this dark area, just a little bit. In fact, I might even pop a teeny bit here, there. And then the same thing, this little part stays light. This little part comes down where his eye is. <clears throat> right now this looks a little funny, but it'll look good in a few minutes. We'll get it all softened up and looking good. And remember, when, like we did the chicken, the white chicken, if you saw that, that just because it's white or leaving white doesn't mean it has to be pure white. We can leave some color in it. And that really extra colors makes it come out in a very, very nice way. All right. So I want to do his cute little nose, which is pink. I'm going to soften this just a little bit before we go to that point. All right, looks like I got a little bit in the eye there. You know, I just, everything in wants me, in me wants me to go a little bit greener on that eye. So I'm going to talk just a little bit more green while that's drying. Oh yeah, I like that. This one is a leaf green, just a little bit. Gives them that nice, oh, I love that. Okay, sometimes you just have to experiment. 
And if it doesn't work, you can lift it out. And that's why I don't want you to be afraid of watercolor because it's really fun to do. And it's fun to try some new things and, and just experiment with it a little bit. Okay, so that kitty is, his nose is kind of pink. However, it also has a little bit of that brown matter color that we used. So I'm going to use the brown matter and drop a little bit of pink in it. So it has a little bit of combination of the two. We're gonna put this down here. So I think that's a good kitty color. And at the very top of his nose, he's got some kind of brownish areas. So I'm going to drop just a little bit of burnt umber in here. That really rich brown we've used before with these videos. I'm just gonna kind of dot a little bit right over here. Just, I want it to go into the pink nose just a little bit like that. Now, obviously we're gonna have to come back and get those nostrils, but it's too soon because it'll run right in there. I do wanna run a real soft line on top of what I just did. Like I said, I'm using a number six brush. So kind of a small brush at this point. Now let's go in, up into the nose. So I see this Quinburn orange mix, but I'm thinning it out here because this is pretty thin at this point. And this part stays white. So I wanna just come alongside this and move this down here. Kind of just come to about right there. And on the side of his nose, it gets a little bit darker. So I'm softening this out here, softening this in the inside. And in the picture, I definitely see some more Verdita blue right in here. He's got kind of a grayish color here, so we're gonna exaggerate that just a little bit. And then really this, this nose softens down here. And where it goes really dark is these lines. And I don't like this dark of a line. That's my pencil line. I'm gonna soften that out just a little bit. And I am going to add a darker color to thin his nose down, her nose down just a little bit. Oh, bear with me. I tell you, sometimes I think I go crazy. But, okay, now we're going to let that dry because it's too soon to go back in there and do that. Um, into this part here, she has got some really cute, distinctive lines. And I want those to come right in that wet area. This one kind of almost makes a U shape. And then this one comes down here. And some of them just come right at the top here and come down. Now, that would be cute, except for we got way too many hard lines. So we're just gonna soften all these lines up, inside and out. Some of it will be taken away a little bit, but you'll be able to see what we're doing here. And I wanna come back to a little bit of that um, yellow ochre, but this time I'm going to add a little of my Quinbert orange in it, soften it down, so I don't want it to be quite that yellow. This is a better color right here. So the mix of the two, Quinbert orange and yellow ochre, is a, a better mix at this point. So just kind of come down here, a little bit down there. So see how fun this is just to mix all these colors? I hope you have fun and I hope you're trying them. Don't just watch them. Get your paints out and try them. And if you use acrylic and that's your medium, then just try it with acrylic. I mean, the difference is, as you know, if you're using acrylic versus, um, versus watercolor is acrylic is going to go on dark first and lighter and, and watercolor goes lighter and then you go darker. So, but it still can be done. And this is such a cute little kitten. I want to, I want to put a little gray right here where I see it above the eye. So just kind of gray that down a little bit. The other one doesn't seem to have it, but underneath here, I definitely see some gray and along that mouth. So I want to capture that while I 
got my blue out and I see it for sure on this little cheek area. And then we'll wanna come back to that real soft color of the where I mixed yellow ochre and quinvert orange. And we'll come right down here and add some more of that. And you, if you'll notice, I'm just using my brush. I'm just squiggling around to get some color in this little kitty. Now this area here will go a little bit lower. We want to keep white because she's got a lot of white areas here. We'll just come down by this nose. Come right kind of on top of that blue. And that just carries that a little bit down. Now here in this area here, it gets darker because it's, it's farther in the background, but it's a little bit faded. So we're gonna keep this really, really soft back here. And I'm just gonna use a lot of water and just kinda allow it to do a little bit of negative painting right there so you can see, you can see that there is some hair differences there in between here and here. And we might go darker eventually on that, but for right now, I'm gonna Soften that down. Here's the edge of the bed, so we're not gonna mess that up. Okay. And in here, it really goes soft. So I'm gonna push some of this out right into our picture. So we just have this soft, soft fur look. Maybe even just squiggle a little of this right into our painting. So you see it's soft and just kind of can blend that in our background right there. You know, just using my brush like that can take a little of that off and just create the softness down here. Now down here, it is a very thin, thin, almost white color. So I'm gonna use a lot of water with that Quinvert orange and my uh, yellow ochre mix. And I'm gonna bring it down here and just add some of this down here. Now, same thing here. I want that to be a really soft mix. And right in this area, I see a little gray. So we're gonna go back to the, um, to the Verdita Blue. Verdita Blue isn't gray, but it has a tendency to be a little blue gray. So where we added that darker color here, some of this mix just goes darker and it creates a gray on top of our Quinvert orange. It comes down right here, comes by this little kitty fur. And just kind of see how easy that is. And I want you to not be fearful of watercolor because it is way more forgiving than most people think it is, but it's so fun to do. All right, so. Let's see what we got. See if those eyes are dry enough. Just about. I can't wait to take the mask off because it gives a beautiful highlight, but I got to be patient. So let's go back over to here and drop some of this real pretty soft color here. We want to keep it soft because this kitty has a little white and just a light color here. Now it goes darker right here. But what I want to do, this is part of his blanket, her blanket. So what I'm going to do is go back to this Verdita Blue, but this time I'm going to add a little bit of my brown to create a, br a gray. See how pretty that gray is? And I want to drop in some gray. This is nice and um, wet, and that's what I want. So we're going to just drop in little bit of that gray, so it kind of gives us that softness of the fur there. And I'm gonna put a little more here where I told you it was really gray and drop in a little bit more there. Even though I just used blue before, I like that. So I'm gonna take that same color back into behind the ear here. It kind of peeled out a little bit. And watercolor will draw dry lighter, so oftentimes just go back, put a little touch there right where it gets darker, and here as well, on this ear, do the same thing. Just add a little bit, doesn't have to be very much. All right, 
So now we got this real soft look. This little part of her bed comes back here. And I don't like this hard line right here. That was when I did the background. So this is where I like to use a little bit of scrubber brush. You've seen me use it before. I've explained in the other videos that a lot of people don't like to use a scrubber brush, but for me it works and I get it very, very wet and I keep a very gentle touch, a very gentle touch because I just want to create a very soft line right here between the bed and not have a hard line. So this is such an easy fix. You can do it with a brush, but it needs to be fairly stiff to get that. So see how that just makes that a really soft one? And the same thing here. I just want to come down to this where the edge of the bed is really a little bit of a hard line, which I don't want. I'm just going to come down and soften that out. Use my little towel. That instantly creates this really soft line. And I want to do it on the top of here. It isn't so much that it's a hard line here, but I just want to get rid of a little bit of this that will blend into the background. So I'm just utilizing this. Again, I'm not disturbing the paper because you don't want to do that. And then you've got a whole nother problem. Okay. Now we're going to want to go underneath her face right in here. And I definitely want this darker here because if you'll remember, I put a little bit of masking there. So eventually we're going to take that off and I want that to be dark enough to show that masking. So we're going to come up to here and let that be kind of dark. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that Quinn burnt orange and just drop it in here. So she's got a little bit of both, got a little bit of dark, got a little bit of gray. And remember, any blue and any brown will make a nice gray. You can make a gray as well by going opposites on the color wheel. So wherever your opposite is, if you mix those together, you can get some lovely, lovely grays. Now look at this, where I added that, it just has a little bit of a hard line. I wanna soften that out. See how easy that is? And especially easy right now because it's still a little bit damp. So I can just take my regular brush and come down there. Now on her paw, I'm going to mix some of that thin Quinburnt orange. I'm going to go into this paw area and her little paw line comes down here like this. We're going to leave some of this white some of this pot is white. So I'm just softening this out a little bit. Now some of this area, I want to pick up some of that gray again. So I'm going to add a little bit more, a little blue. Well, I'm making it kind of dark this time, but that's okay. I want you to see what it can do. Okay, now it's too brown. So if I go back, add more blue, a little thicker. Should make just me a beautiful gray. Nope, still too brown. Okay, there we go. Look how nice that is. And that's what I want. I might even add a smidgen more. Okay, there's certain areas that go really dark gray. And I'm, I'm going to go right back over this while it's still wet because I see it going really, really dark. And in the first video, maybe even the second video, I talked a lot about values, how important values are. And if you're not familiar with values, you want to be sure and have the darkest of darks in any of your painting and the lightest of lights. And those darks is what's going to make your contrast and really make it beautiful. So we want to have a nice combination of some dark areas and some really light areas, which will pop out this kitty in great ways. And we have, oh my goodness, we have so many dark areas. In fact, underneath these paws where the shadow is, we'll want to put some of that there too. So I'm going to go back to just on the edge of this gray, and I still want to make this just a little bit darker where I see my photo reference. I'm going to show you really quick. So right in here, we've got some definite gray areas under the mouth there, which we haven't done under here. And in this little V area, we want to make sure that we're getting all those areas because that will help add value to your painting. So a little more on this side. Remember I told you that 
underneath his nose that needs to be thinned down just a little bit. So we'll put a little bit of that as well. So right in here, I'm going to go the really dark. And right in here, we're going to thin that down just a little bit on his her nose. My goodness. Okay. And we'll soften that out. Okay. On either side. And that just thins that nose down a little bit. And we should be okay now to go ahead and put those nostrils in. And those are pretty dark. So what we're going to do is just mix a little bit more of our, our sepia. And a little bit more of our Payne's Green. I got that a little too wet, so I'm going to dry my brush and just pick up quite a bit of darkness. And that's when you can make this watercolor work for you all by the consistency of this. Now, the, the amount of water you put in. So I want to have this little nostril here and on this side here too. So I'm just using my small brush to get that in. And this little nose carries up there just a little bit. So we'll add just a little bit of dark there. And I know, you know it, we're going to soften that out just a little bit. Okay, just a little so it doesn't look harsh. And then some of that dark line mixed with maybe a little bit of that pink and gray. So I'm going to gray this pink down. This was the mix that I used, the um, brown matter and a little bit, a little bit of the pink for the mouth. I want to come down here with that mixture and pretty much here is more gray. So I'm going to put a little bit of this, but I'm going to gray it down. Kind of looks like she's smiling a little bit. I'm going to drop a little gray on here. And this is very soft right underneath this. So we'll just soften this out here, soften that line out that we just put. Just kind of like that. And I see this whole area just kind of go gray right underneath here, right underneath her little mouth. And she's starting to take shape here. Okay, I think we should be ready to go and take off on that eye the highlight and we'll see what we got. So I have a nice little highlight there, a nice little highlight here. And this right here is actually one of her eyelashes. But I think I'm going to fix that a little bit. It looks a little wonky. And that's the easy fix. So first what I want to do is I'm going to add a little bit more of this white. I'm just going to scrub out a teeny bit of this white right there. Where I see it to be a little white, a little light. And right there. And now on that eye, I do want it have an eyelash because that's what I see as I look at this but it doesn't go up like this so we're just going to put a little bit of color here soften that out and I think what I'm gonna do I think we're going to add just a little bit of this gray right in here kind of in between that so you get the idea that there is, I'm going to try to make a thin line there. There's a little bit of eyelash in there, just a little bit. Okay. Soften that out just a teeny. Oh, she's getting like, she's looking more like a kitty all the time. I want to drop a little bit of that darker brownie gray right in her eye. Or her eye, her nose. Let's try that. Just like that. And I want to soften that again because I really do see that she's got just a little bit on the top of her nose. And it just is kind of characteristic. Now the other place I see, she's got some little freckles here. And they're not really freckles. But what they are is um, the places where the whiskers come out. So I want to soften this area first before I do that because we don't want hard, hard lines here on her little face. So I'm just gonna soften that area out 
and wait just a moment. I kind of feel like I still need to thin that nose down just a little. So by putting a little bit of more dark here, that is going to thin her nose down just a little bit like I see in the picture. There we go. Okay, should be good to now put these freckle-like little areas for her, her fur. So that's what we're going to do. Just like this, they just kind of join together. And by doing it this way, it keeps it a little bit soft. So we'll do the same thing. I've got quite a bit of water here. Oh, that one's even more water. But that's okay, because we want to keep it really soft. And then this one goes a little bit longer and kind of joins together. Now, actually, I like the left side better than the right side. So I'm going to add just a smidgen more of water and go back and let them spread out like that because I think that looks really good. That's the way they should look. Now when we get enough water eventually, I'm sorry, when we get enough color eventually and get this part done, we will take off these nice little whiskers, which I went ahead and the ear ones too. But I feel like we need a little bit more work in this one ear up here. So I'm going to go back to my Quinn Burnt Orange Come down here just a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit of color in here, soften this down on the outside. And she's got a little pale, we'll go back to that, we'll go back to the yellow ochre and mix a little bit of that Quinn Burnt Orange because on the edge of that ear, it's so it almost appears white, but it's not white. So we want to put just a little bit of color dropped in there just a little bit and we'll do just a little bit right in there too okay I like that I'm gonna still drop a little more color here and I'm just randomly putting some down here again and I might add a little more quinbert orange right on top of it because it feels like it's just a little bit golder right in there okay now we need to do this paw, kind of neglected that one. And and before I do that one, I'm going to put more of that gray right here on her nose. I'm sorry, mouth. Boy, am I just not with it today. So you're gonna have to forgive me for saying the wrong part of the kitty. I've called it a nose, I've caught it a mouth, I've called it everything but what it is. So. I think I've got a lot on my mind today. Sometimes you just do that and then you call something and it doesn't make sense at all. So bear with me a little and uh, I'm sorry when I'm sounding kind of stupid. Okay, so I like that. Now I see some more of this Redeeter Blue on the right paw, the right as we see it. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of negative painting here where it kind of gets gray. Soften this all down here. So we keep that idea that there's quite a bit of hair on that paw. And now we can take that Quinn Burnt Orange and go right in here especially. Just drop a little of that color. So now it looks like we've got all that beautiful, nice hair, white hair coming down here. So let's bring some of this down. And then I see a little gray and blue right underneath here. So we'll make sure and get that. And pop some of this color back on here. Okay. Now I'm just going to soften my brush here so we have the idea of lighter, but we don't have hard lines right there. And then this isn't pure white, so I'm going to go back to that real soft mixture. Just put a little bit on top of there. So it looks like we have a little bit of kitty fur coming down here. We actually have a little on the left side too. So let's just do a little negative painting here. It will be really subtle here because we've already put that down. We'll get a little more blue. And we'll just drop a little bit here. 
where it gives us the idea there's a little kitty for going. Again, when you do negative painting, just paint underneath that and you'll have that nice soft look on top. A fur coming down. There we go. And right in here, I'm going to drop a little bit of this cobalt, cobalt violet. I want just a little bit of purple coming down in here. It needs just a little bit of color. And I think I'm going to drop it on this one too. Now remember on the first video, I used a lot of this and it's, like I said, it's cobalt violet. It's kind of a spendy paint, but oh my goodness, I love it. And it makes so good with blues and it's a lovely color. It will tend to granulate just a little bit. I got this one at Daniel Smith's, but oh my goodness. No, you know what? Sorry, take that back. I have got this one at Holbein. And the reason is I used to buy Daniel Smith on this. And now remember, I love Daniel Smith colors. But on this particular one, I found that the Daniel Smith granulates a little more. And this is granulating a little bit, meaning that it's, the paint's kind of breaking up a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I noticed that the HWC doesn't as much. A little bit. Now, I love this look. I love this look with this little bit of purple. So we're going to drop in a little bit here where it could tend to be a little bit boring and drop it back here behind the ear. Doesn't that look cute? Anyway, it does to me. Maybe it doesn't to you. Maybe you're thinking I'm ruining it by the cobalt, but I think it looks really, really good. And so we'll put a little there and we'll add a little bit more here. Now, I want to blend those in, and we are almost done with this cat. And you can see how fast it went. It, it's um, one of those things that when you're not worried about um, doing it just perfect, you can just come in here with these colors and make it so cute. And you can see where we can add a lot of colors, but it still looks like this pretty little kitty that we just love. Now I'm looking in here and this little kitty has a little bit more color right in there. It's goes white, but not quite that white. And I think we'll drop in just a little bit more right here, keeping that other white. But it does feel like underneath here, she's got a little bit more of this color here. And you do see what that little highlight does for the eye. It just makes it look so fun. Now, under here, though, I feel like this is too harsh of a line. So I'm going to take, whoa, get a little more color out of this. I'm going to take my tip of my brush. Still got a little bit of color, but it'll be all right. And I'm just going to soften that line a little bit. Now, underneath there, I do have some hairs that I marked off with our, um, our masking. So we will eventually take that off and right in here I want to put a little more color and the reason I do is because I really want this these lines on the whiskers to show up so I'm gonna actually come down here I mixed a little blue and a little bit of gray or deeper blue sorry and a little bit of cobalt just down here because I want these whiskers to show up in a nice way probably take a little of that right up here and that'll help that show up just a little bit now here got a little too much gray right here so we'll scrub a little of that out okay so I am thinking this kitty is almost done I do see in here it goes darker so I want to get a little darker Quinbert orange here I might drop another color on it but for right now right where these lines are going to go and we do have masking in here so it's going to really help it to show out good once I take that masking off let's make that a little bit darker here and I am definitely going to drop some of that cobalt violet right in here I want that to stay just a pretty color and it's going to mix with all those hairs Okay, almost done. So what I need to do is to dry this a little bit. 
so that I can take all this masking off and then I think we have ourselves a really cute kitty. Oh, one thing really quick. I wanna put a little bit of shadow underneath on this bed because this kitty, I'm gonna mix the cobalt violet and a little of my verdita blue and I'm going to drop just a little bit of brown matter in this because I want it to have a little bit of that color tone. And as I look at my reference picture here, it has just a little bit of shadow where his little fur comes up here, right here, comes here. And I want to soften that line because that shadow isn't hard. Okay. And we're going to do the same color here. I really like that color mix. Make it a little darker on this side. So in here, I'm going to let some of that fur come out into a negative way, into a negative painting way. Just do this out here where that shadow is. Soften that out. And then along here, his little bed, there's a little bit more of it, but I want to go a little bluer back into here. This little blue gray back here and put that some of that in here and this will give us a little bit more value as well which is kind of cool and we'll just let some of this remember we softened that line so I want to keep that line soft but on the bottom I want to go into that actual fabric that we have here and we'll just soften that all the way down so it just appears like this kitty has got a little shadow, which he does, she does, on the edge of her bed. Okay, soften that top line out a little bit. And then right in here, I want a negative pink, but I'm going to go back to that color of the brown matter, add it into this. <clears throat> and where I see this little kitty fur here, we're just going to negative paint a little bit. Let some of this really pretty hair come out. Okay. And remember, anytime we do that, we want to just soften that bottom up so it looks like we have some really nice softness going on. But that top part, that top part has a place where you can see that fur, just like that. And we're not going to overdo this. We just want it to come down just a little bit. So now you see just a little bit of shadow here. And then the last place is we want to go right underneath where this little blanket is, where the edge of it is. And it looks like to me it's kind of a cottony soft blanket. This part is white. This part is a different color. That's just what we're trying to achieve. All right. So I'm going to pop the blow dryer on for just a moment. Okay, that should do it. So this is always the fun part for me, is to take off this mask and let these little kitty hairs where we put shine through. Put just a little bit down here. We didn't use very much there. And sometimes what I have to do we have to soften some of them, and I feel like we need to soften these. So this is good, and this is where you got to be really careful with mask. Mask can be great, and it can also look kind of harsh. And so I love, love, love the whiskers, but I don't like that because that is too harsh. So I like this. This turned out really nice and soft, but the rest of it to me is too harsh. So. There's a couple things I can do. I can just run pure water here and just tone this down a little bit so you'll still get the idea that there's some hairs here. We're just gonna tone them down just a little bit. And so they'll still be hairs, but they're not gonna be so hard. And even on this area, I think I'm just gonna add a little more of that blue right in there and then on this this is a little harsh right here so I'm gonna go back to pick up 
Ooh, my brush cover up a little bit of those. So some of it creeps up here and I like that. So we'll just tone that down. I'm kind of just squiggling my brush a little bit for this area. These are fine, but the ones inside, I feel like they need this to be softened down a little bit. So they're fine on the outside, but not on the inside. There we go. Okay, cover that a little bit. And I think, let me just, just look this over. Okay, this is where I want to take my little brush, just a little bit, and a clean, clean paper towel. In fact, I'm going to get some clean water because I don't want any dirty water at this point on my kitty slide. Always come prepared, and I'm going to go and use my little soft brush just a little bit up here. Remember, a lot of water lot of water and light, light movements just to soften that edge out where this little kitty has a little bit of hair right here, but not too much. So we're just going to soften a little bit of out. Kind of makes it go light again, and I like that. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. I want this line to be a little bit softer here, just a little. Okay. And then right up here, we lost a little of the white, so I can just pick that back up and get some white on the top of her ear. And here, she has a little bit of natural fur coming out. So if I just go along this line here a little bit, again, lots and lots of water. Barely, barely come down to where I'm not disturbing the paper. And especially when you use hot press, you do not want to disturb this paper because this paper is softer than the cold press, the hot press is. You want to be very, very careful. Just a little bit. You don't have to overdo it. See, this is a little harsh here, so I'm just going to pick up some of this, more water. And this is just a finishing pieces for me. Um, again, I know that some watercolorists will not use a scrub brush and that is a preference and that's fine. And as I had mentioned in my other videos, I actually learned this from a very renowned watercolorist that I went to one of her workshops and she introduced us to a scrub brush just for finishing touches like this. You don't want to overdo it. You want to have your main painting good before you do this. But this just softens up some little areas here. I feel like this picture feels done to me. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Please leave positive comments. Um, I would love to hear how you end up doing this cat. This would be a great blessing to me. So have a great day and we will come back and come to another one, possibly a horse next. Thank you so much for listening.